So this is what happens when you have this signal, sample and hold voltage. And then I'm going to apply it to the base voltage of uh, this transistor, which is controlling the oscillations. Right now it's biased to very, very, very low. And when I apply it to it, let's see what happens. So as we discussed previously, the sample and hold takes a sample uh, input wave, as in the case of this sine wave right here, and samples the voltage at different points and produces an output that is those sampled voltages. Here's a review of the sample and hold schematic. Basically, it all starts with an oscillator that uh, produces short burst signals. Uh, basically, it's going to give you a square wave that using a capacitor and resistor and then an op amp based comparator, it produces these very short duty cycle uh, pulses that go into the gate of a MOSFET. The input wave, the wave or the signal that's being sampled is given into the drain of the MOSFET and the source is connected to this one microfarad capacitor that is storing the voltage that's being sampled that stored voltage is buffered uh, with another op amp and is output. So now that we have these sampled voltages, sampled and held voltages, what do we do with them? Well, my purpose here is to use them as a control voltage for a separate voltage controlled oscillator. And I'm gonna demonstrate that in the next part of this video uh, applying it to the base of a transistor to use it as a variable resistor. Using the potentiometer on the square wave oscillator, you can change the rate at which sampling is taking place. And so as seen on the left here, you could sample at very coarse steps or very fine steps as you can uh, on the right side of the screen. This is an example of the sample and hold voltages serving to as the control voltages for a sawtooth wave oscillator. Now let's try it on a sine wave oscillator. So here is this bridge T sine wave oscillator and it basically consists of a T circuit with the two 5.6 nanofarad capacitors um, with a 150 uh, ohm resistor that goes to ground. And then in series with that, you could put a potentiometer. Um, but, uh, and then there's a um, one million ohm resistor that bridges it. And um, you can put instead of a potentiometer to ground, uh, I have here a BJT um, NPN transistor that goes to ground. And the base of that uh, is controlled by a varying voltage uh, from a sample and hold circuit, which I have here. And that voltage uh, gets scaled down um, using uh, this potentiometer. And um, that allows for uh, this NPM transistor to be a, um, a variable resistor. And in series with this 150 ohm resistor, it allows a pitch change based on the voltage applied to the um, base of that transistor. So that bridge T network um, is in the negative feedback loop of this TLO 74 op amp. And so that is a sine wave. So we used this previously in a uh, kick drum circuit, but now um, that wave decayed 
if there's no input signal going into it into the positive or the non-inverting input of the op amp. So in order to have a sustained sine wave from this, you have to have a positive feedback and the positive feedback has to have some gain. So between the output and the non-inverting input, I have this 20K resistor and a 660 ohm resistor to ground um, in the positive feedback side of the op amp circuit. And in this way, you get a sustained sine wave generated, which gives you a nice smooth sound um, and with a positive and 12, uh, positive and negative 12 volt rails on this op amp, um, it gives you a, uh, basically a 20 volt peak to peak, uh, sine wave when you're just using it as a sine wave generator. And with a variable resistor here, you can just control the voltage on the fly. So I have a triangle wave that's being sampled and held, um, with this sample and hold circuit and basically let's hear what it sounds like and it's basically a sine wave with a changing pitch and with the sample and hold i have the sampling rate controlled by another potentiometer, which controls uh, the frequency of oscillation of a separate oscillator. And I'm gonna increase that frequency. Let me slow it down again. oscilloscope probe onto the output of the sample and hold circuit and let me adjust please note the maximum and minimum voltages going into the base of the transistor at the upper right corner of the oscilloscope screen and that's the various voltages being sampled and held and coming out of the sample and hold circuit and that's what's going to the base of that transistor. So let me turn this off, because it's a little bit of an annoying sound. So that is the combined sample and hold circuit being used to generate a control voltage. And the, uh, and the sampled wave is coming from the CD4106 oscillator, and it's basically um, a low frequency oscillator uh, and it's sampling a triangle wave using this 47 microfarad uh, capacitor and um, uh, 470 uh, K uh, uh, resistor across. So anyways, that gives you a nice slow low frequency oscillator and um, and then another one of these uh, uh, CD4106 um, Schmidt trigger inverters is used to generate the high frequency um, pulse signal that goes to the base of this MOSFET that generates the sample and hold. But anyway, um, that's it. Thanks for watching.